think there are many different aspects to space. We have our physical spaces and then we have the space in our minds, the mental space. It affects and it reflects. These two concepts are complementary. So how important is it to have our own space? And what is that in our minds? Madam Chong was living in Wampo until her first husband passed away. It was a rental flat and therefore she had to move on. When you live in the Wampo flat, were you working? No, no, never outside. So you're a housewife to take care of your husband, yeah, I your first husband? Cook, uh, take care of the house. So how did you come to stay in Ewa? My first husband also passed away. I know children take care of me. I take welfare. And the social worker bring me to here. La. Very good. Very freedom. Can walk, can stay here. 24 years I stay here. So how old were you when you got married? Uh, I'm I'm 66. Uh, my husband's 70. He was give I was married. La. Uh, Got, come out newspaper all uh, very grand. <laughs> How many people attended the wedding? So many, all the players all see me very grand. And where's your husband now? To all go heaven already. <laughs> what kind of activity do you have? Huh? Activity here, uh, got exercise, got karaoke, got choir. And what do you like to do? I can do all I like. <laughs> yeah, got friend to take me, I take you. <laughs> the community home, the space, is sort of all encompassing. It's like a, a community centre and also a home all in one. So I think it, it does liven up her life. Given that she has no uh, children or siblings or relatives. The home is her family and the home is her life. With Madam Chong, we explore the concept of a physical space. And with Gerald, we explore more the concept of his mental space. At certain point in my daily life, I, I can get quite affected if my mood being too high or too low. If it's one of the bad days when things are getting heavy, I have racing thoughts. I can take medication for life and I don't recover. Can you understand that? The medication helps me to produce the chemicals I need. But recovery comes from me. There's no cure for me for my bipolar. I can do my part as in to stay well and to live a life of recovery. Being awakened, and aware, you know, of what life is really about. So that's where I reach out and help others. Club Hill is where I work currently. Knowingly that I have bipolar, they employ me. So I mix with um, company, you know, that have the same motivation, you know. You can look at me and judge me for who I am. Not because I have bipolar, how I present myself, how I talk to you, what I do for you, is from my heart. Judge me from that. The idea of coming up here, right, it's, it's more like to see the world from a different perspective. Maybe when I'm at my place and my space, mainly it's my own environment. But over here, I don't focus on myself. So I see a, a life beyond where I am. There's things that I can contribute, there's people I can help, and there's a different side of me. We're all sort of one and the same, right? We face the pressures of society. I think Daryl um, needs a place to clear his thoughts. It could be a um, vantage point, it could be in a park, it could be taking a walk. How far he's come, he's done it for himself. It is about believing. So for Daryl, I hope that the people around him can believe in his goodness and in his will. I think when you 
start to dig deeper and when you're given the opportunity to actually get to know people on a on a one-to-one -one basis, that segment of society opens up. So going through this community trust project and witnessing their difficulties, it's no longer a one-man show. It's never so easy. It takes a society. It's very important for everyone to make the first step to understand who needs help and why and how. And that is the way we can all move forward together.